y'all. Welcome to Biblically Blonde. My name is Lacey, and this is the How to Study the Bible series. In the next eight videos, I'm going to be defining Bible study, showing you how I study the Bible, and so much more. Be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see all the videos in this series, and go to biblicallyblonde.com for awesome free Bible study tools. Now, let's get started. Okay, so in this series, like I said in the intro, we are diving into Bible study, and I'm going to talk about a whole range of things. In this video, we're going to talk about why you should study the Bible and what Bible study is. So to get started, I just kind of want to paint this like broad picture here. So we have devotionals, we have YouTube, we have Bible study apps, we have so much available to us more than any other time in history to actually understand and read God's word. I mean, it's it's crazy how many translations there are, how many Bible apps there are. There is so much out there for us to really study and know God's word. And yet more than ever before, people at aren't reading the Bible. They aren't studying the Bible and they're actually misusing God's word. So while I was doing research for this video, I found these a couple really awesome statistics. I found out that nine out of 10 households or 87% of families own a Bible. Out of a thousand Americans polled by Lifeway Research, only 11% have read the entire Bible at least once, while 15% have only read half. So it's not really that surprising to see that when they polled Americans, 52% said that they thought that the Bible was a good source of morals. Like that was the what the Bible was about. And spoiler alert, it's not. So I don't want to bore y'all with numbers. This isn't about statistics. I just want to kind of shed a light on the fact that more Americans than ever before are not studying God's word. They're not even reading God's word. And most of the time, I would say that we're not opening the Bible unless it's Sunday church service or we're faced with an emergency. And I completely understand why. The Bible is extremely hard to understand. It's complicated. It's long. It's written in a tough old English type language that's hard for us to read. And it's very outdated and old. Did I mention it's old? So why would we even want to study a book that is that old and hard to understand. It seems like a lot of pressure for us to do that when we don't actually have to. Well, we want to because God's word is alive and active. It is through God's word that chains are broken, that lives are changed, spirits are set free, lives are forever changed because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And most of us have no problem shouting from the rooftops our love for the Lord. I know I don't. We want to scream to everyone what he's done for us, what he's done for other people that we know. But what we really struggle with is that spiritual discipline of Bible study. It takes only a second to be saved by Christ, but a lifetime to truly know his word. That there is nothing in life that will bring more meaning or reap more benefit than Bible study. My main objective with Biblically Blonde is to help women grow closer to Christ by teaching them skills to know God's word better. Help them understand and comprehend scripture, eliminate distractions, and enjoy reading. In addition, I aim to help myself and other women live practical and fulfilling, wholehearted lives devoted to the Lord. So the nitty gritty of it is why should we study the Bible? Well, we should study the Bible because if we don't know God's word fully, the enemy is going to misuse his word. He is going to take that misinformation that we have and obstruct it for us, other believers, and the unsaved. We also should study the Bible because it is through Bible study that the Lord is going to talk to us. A lot of times people will say that, oh, the Lord isn't talking to me. The Lord is silent. The Lord is not silent. He has pages upon pages upon books upon books written to us of his word to us. Now it's in a story and I'll get to that about how we can actually figure out what he's saying because it's not exactly like he's talking to us individually. But in a way, he is. And so God's not silent. He's spoken to us. He continues to speak to us through his word. And it is through his word that we will be changed. It is nothing that we can do that will make us better. But instead, it's allowing God's word to work through us that changes us and makes us into his righteousness. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 actually lets us know that God's word is equipped for every good work. 
So what exactly is Bible study? Well, I think it's easier to kind of go through of what is not Bible study. But first, let me just set the groundwork and explain that Bible study is knowing God. That's its simplest form. We don't have to complicate it. John 1, 1 actually tells us that in the beginning was the Word. And so when we study Bible, we are actually studying God and knowing Him. So how exactly do you get to know someone? Well, you spend time with them. You learn about who they are and what characteristics they have and their personality and things that upset them and things that they love and things that make them happy. You get to know them. And that is what we do through Bible study. We get to know God. Along with getting to know God, we have to remember that Bible study is an intentional act of observing, comprehending, and interpreting scripture. It requires discipline and does not come easy. Nevertheless, the benefits of, of scripture reading and studying are endless, but it is an intentional act, okay? It is not something that's just going to come easy. In fact, it actually is very hard to really study the Bible, but we do it because it's a discipline and it grows us closer to God. Bible study is not a simple devotional time or just reading of the word. And I think that's where people get into a tricky situation. Now, yes, reading the word is great and some devotionals, depending on what they are, are great as well, but they are not Bible study and they should be done separate of those two. And so when you're actually studying the word, it's not being spoon fed to you like a devotional and it's not inward. It's not asking you to reflect on yourself. You're reflecting upon the scripture. It's not this quiet time that we have every morning where we just pray and listen to some, some music and have a devotional or just read God's word. Now, none of that is wrong, and that has a place in our spiritual discipline life completely. We go through seasons where maybe that's what we focus on and not so much study, or we make room for both. But Bible study itself is very different. Bible study at its core, no matter what type of Bible study that you're doing, you're going to be observing, comprehending, and interpreting. So first you're going to be observing scripture, you're going to be seeing the what happens of it all, you're going to be comprehending it, so you're going to be saying, okay, why did this happen, or what was this needed for, and then the interpreting part of it is it's where you're going to actually ask yourself, what does this teach us about God, and then finally, how can we apply this to our life? So there's a hundred plus ways to study the Bible and all of them pretty much follow that, that sort of, they do it in different ways, but you're always going to be observing in some way, comprehending in some way and interpreting in some way. And there's a million different ways that you can do that. Here at Biblically Blonde, I follow the what happens, why does it happen, what does it tell us about God and how we can apply it in our daily life. That is the what, why, God, apply method. It's something that I created after reading the Jen Wilkins book, Women of the Word. It's something she does, and I kind of morphed it and created it into my own study. And I really find great benefit of it. I've done a thousand different ones, and I absolutely love the what, why, God, apply method. And I think that it is really helpful to truly understanding scripture. Now, when you're studying the Bible, you can choose to do book studies, you can choose to do topical studies, you can choose to do half of, like, let's say you're, you're studying a really, really big book, you can choose to study half of it and then come back to the other half later. So all of that, I would say that at its core, Bible study should not be topical. That doesn't mean that anything's wrong with a topical study every once in a while, but I think there's a lot of damage that can be done if all you are ever doing is topical. Most of your studies should always be strong scripture based in a set book. And then every once in a while, if you want to add in a topical study, that is fine. So whichever method you choose or however you're choosing to study the Bible or whatever book or whatever topic, it just needs to be intentional and you need to have a plan. You need to say, okay, this is how I'm going to study it. Remember, it's not quiet time. It's not devotional time. You need to actually be digging deep into that. And through this series, I'm going to teach you exactly how I do it and tips to help you do this better. So I hope this video was helpful. It's the first in my whole How to Study the Bible series. In the next video, we're going to go over why scripture is so hard to understand. Why does it sound like gibberish? Why when you read scripture, do you stop and you think, oh my gosh, what even did they say? And you're rereading it and rereading it and you can't figure it out. Well, I'm going to go over why that is and how we can actually help fix that when we study God's word. That'll be the next video. So be sure to wait and check that out and subscribe if you want
want to see more Biblically Blonde, don't forget to go to biblicallyblonde.com for lots of awesome free resources on this topic. All right, y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye.